Hey you folks, so long time no video, something like that. Anyway, tonight I have a very special treat for you guys. I have these new fantastic funny playing DMG original Game Boy shells. Uh, so what's, what's unique about these, this one obviously isn't assembled, um, is that these are molded especially for the uh, new... IPS kits that specifically Funny Playing is making. Uh, you'll have to excuse the funny lighting. I've been working from home recently and I had to rewire some things which involved removing some of my existing lighting. And that, now that I'm looking at it on video, has clearly had a major effect. Um, but without undoing all of those changes, I, I can't really fix that. But just have to deal with it. Anyway, sorry, distracted. So yeah, it's it's already trimmed on the inside. The bezel itself is a little bit wider than stock. Uh, and also they come in some new colors. Uh, I'm gonna have to apologize because I know, like I just mentioned, my lighting is a little bit off. So it's kind of hard to tell the actual color of this shell. Uh, so for reference, let me... Uh, I'll just use this. This is the uh, Famicom Red Game Boy Advance SP. You can see how much darker it is than the DMG itself. This is a lightish red, not quite pink, but almost there. Red, uh, it is much lighter than the actual Play It Loud color DMG, but it, it's not its not an unpleasant change in my opinion. I, I think it's actually a really nice color. Um, so this shell in particular was actually sent my way thanks to, uh, Retro Gamer Repair Shop. Um, pretty, uh, pretty standard affair. I think you guys are used to it at this point. Um, but if any, if it's like their previous, um, shell experiments, then I think we're going to be in good shape. But I think I will go ahead and get a, uh, get a DMG assembled and check it out. But before I do that... Let me give you some of my initial impressions. Um, first things first, there is a defect on this shell in particular. If I angle that light down, you can see there's this nick in the corner or in the side here. Uh, that is not typical. That is something that happened to this shell in particular. Um, I was in communication with Retro Game Repair Shop and apparently Customs had sliced open the package and they decided to cut into, you know, a little bit deeply and they had uh, damaged quite a few shells. So that's how I ended up with my hands on this one. The other colors, for example, blue doesn't have that defect. Um, but I'm going to be using red for the video because I already have a blue DMG. I want a red one. Uh, but initial impressions... Um, I mean, I, I still think it's kind of weird that it says contrast, even though this isn't going to be contrast and it's a custom shell. This is the uh, brightness control nub and volume is still volume. Uh, you know what? Let me actually grab another shell for comparison. All right. So I went and grabbed three different Game Boy shells, uh, well, completed Game Boy builds for comparison here. Uh, this yellow one is an OEM example. This is how Nintendo made them. This is the shell itself is completely unmodified. The Game Boy is, of course, custom. Um, but this is how Nintendo made them. This one is a Retro Six Especial. Um, I think it is the uh, de facto comparison for aftermarket shells at this point. And then the last one is a retro modding example. Um, these aren't the highest quality shells, but I think they're probably the best bang for the buck right now, especially uh, they're offering some really cool new customs in the form of their marble shells. Highly recommended you check them out. They look, they look sweet. Um, I'm gonna be doing a video or a stream or something on that soon. Uh, but that's that's for another video. Uh, but anyway, these are the same mold, I believe, as the generic aftermarket shells. And you can tell 
from the back that they have quite a few things in common in that there's no text whatsoever on the mold. There's no logos. Uh, it just has the standard screen printing for the button labels. And personally, that's all right with me because if the alternative is this for Nintendo garbage, then that is not okay. That's, that's, that's dumb. And also, I prefer no text over this blatant uh, self-advertisement there, I guess. Um, since, admittedly, it would be nice to have the uh, stock text here, but I prefer no text over this sort of stuff. Anyway, the whole reason I went and grabbed these shells is because I wanted to take a look at the button, or the, the, the text labeling on these. Uh, specifically, what I, what I wanted to point out is the last shell I took a look at, this blue one in particular from Retro 6, all of the text is literally crooked on the shell. And for how much he says he invested in these shells and for how much he's selling them for and for what he promises them as, I think that's completely unacceptable. The funny playing shells, on the other hand, look at that. The text appears to be perfectly straight. Um, sorry, I have to angle it kind of funny just to get the light to catch it. But I mean, it certainly looks all right to me. It looks way better than some previous attempts. Uh, another nice thing about these shells in particular is that this isn't painted. This is just plastic injection molded. This is the color of the plastic, so we don't have to worry about this wearing off. Unlike this one, which came with a few blemishes from the factory, uh, especially in the corners and such this won't have that problem. Of course, the texture will wear off eventually and probably the screen printing. Um, it'll, it'll show scratches, uh, same as this one, to be honest. But I don't have to worry about the color going away as it wears down. Anyway, that's my initial impressions. Uh, this shell also came with, I believe it came with a lens. Um, if it did, I have entirely misplaced it by now. Um, but it doesn't matter too much because the LCD kit that goes in this is going to use a custom lens anyway. Uh, it also came with some buttons here. I don't think they normally come with buttons. I think you have to pick those up separately. Um, but I just have this standard DMG color, um, color colorway, uh, which is the... Uh, black D-pad and maroon A and B. Uh, I would have preferred just dark gray, but at the moment, Funny Playing does not offer dark gray. They offer black, and at the time, that was out of stock. Um, but anyway, it comes with the uh, button spring, or the battery spring contacts pre-installed. Uh, one thing that's nice about these cases, uh, if you're into that sort of thing, is these are completely flat on the inside. There's no, like, um, battery ridges or anything so if you're installing a battery mod you don't have to worry about trimming that out of there uh, that's already uh, already nice and flat the downside is if you are using normal AA batteries it is a little bit harder to get them lined up because they'll do that nonsense until you get them all in there but it'll work eventually Anyway, let's get going with the normal build here. So let me set these aside for now. Ooh, I can't set that there. Cause that's my donor. You know what, let's double check this. It's always a good idea to double check that your console actually works before uh, taking it apart. I think 
this one, for example, won't read my game. I'm getting a different thing every single time I try and boot it. Now, it could just be the game itself. Let me get another game. Just didn't like that game, I guess. Oh, come on. Maybe it's not the game. Maybe it's the Game Boy. Hmm. I'm thinking it probably just needs a clean. There it goes. Now it's working. So yeah, I'll just have to clean it out when I get it popped open. Seems to be working fine now. Focus, you little shit. Okay, anyway, that's enough of that. Let's get this torn down, shall we? This is a Triwing model. You know, I finally sat down, took a good, hard, long look at my setup and decided that it wasn't working for me. And I got a new desk on the way and it's so much bigger. Oh, it's great. It's gonna be great. It is of course, January 2nd, Saturday, um, as of the time of filming this. So shipping, of course, is gonna be a little bit of a little while on account of the uh, holiday and then the weekend but it'll be good I think by the time I do my next video I'll have my new setup and I'll have so much more space all right now I need One, two, three, four. And this whole thing should pop out, and this is what we need to save. And this thing is surprisingly clean looking on the inside. My uh, parts consoles are usually, usually much worse off. Like I don't see anything that needs cleaning up. I don't even see any dust. This is bizarre. I'm at, I'm at a loss. All right, uh, I am going to pause for a moment and get this cart slot cleaned out though. Bear with me just one sec. All right, so I have done a video before on cleaning out the cart slot, but the TLDR is get the console open so you have access to the bear cart port, take an old toothbrush, take some isopropyl alcohol, and uh, combine them all together. Give it a quick 
once over. And that usually solves every problem. There are um, official cart cleaning kits that Nintendo released for this console. And I do actually have one, but I don't know. This is, this is easier, I think. It's more effective. And at this point, that other kit is basically a collectible. Not worth much, but I like it. It's the only, it's one of the few new in box things I have for Game Boy, so why not? And uh, side note, if your console is not reading carts and you're the type to blow in the cart slot, do yourself a solid. Take the thing apart and clean it proper because blowing in the cart slot does not actually get it to solve does not actually solve your problem. What you're doing every time you blow in the cart slot is you remove the cart, insert blow, and then reinsert the cart. But it's the remove and reinsert the cart part that is actually getting your console to reinitiate the connection. And that's, that's what's actually causing it to work, if you will. Not the fact that you're blowing on it. The fact that you're blowing on it is causing more damage in the long term than anything else. Um, unfortunately, sometimes these things just do get dirty over the years, considering this is a 30-year-old console. But anyway, I think that is sufficiently clean. So let's carry on with the install here. Go in there like that. Drop in the new power switch. Looks like I accidentally bent these, so I'm inserting nicely. And there we go. Someone is being very disruptive. I think he's jealous that I'm not giving him attention. All right, there is the back half of the Game Boy. For those wondering, this is not 100% compatible with OEM shells, it looks like it does not line up over here. Oh, maybe it will once you get the screws in. Never mind. So that's always nice if you wanted to mix and match. I mean, with this color scheme, personally, I'm not, I'm not really digging it, but at least it's an option. All right. Next up, we have a uh, IPS kit from Fun Playing and Retro Game Repair Shop here. I have done a video on one of these in the past, but uh, I guess here's another one. Save that for something nefarious. I mean, for uh, 
something else. All right. So what we got here, we have these spacers that go on the uh, on the front of the shell to make sure the this PCB is the proper height. We have a lens that comes with the kit itself, not the screen or the shell. The adapter ribbon, some adhesive to attach the LCD to the shell itself, and then the LCD and the adapter ribbon. So, before we continue, let's uh, let's make sure this kit works. So I heard rumors of uh, Funny Playing making their own battery mods. Um, I heard that they were making one for Game Boy Advance, but the fact that they have this cut out in here for the original Game Boy Shell 2 makes me, leads me to believe they might be making one for DMG as well. Uh, I don't know whatever happened to that Game Boy Advance one. Clearly, that never actually happened. Uh, I don't know if they are going to revisit that or make another one for DMG, but here we are. More speculation. Anyway. Uh, let's try it. The kit. should always test the kit before doing an install because... Unfortunately, DOA is a real thing that does happen, and if it happens to you, you want to make sure it is because it was shipped to you that way and not because you installed it improperly. completely forgot how this kit went together for a second. Alright, that goes in there, just like that. That folds over. And that should be it. Ta-da! Works, let's pop a game in. Is a working. Now, one thing I've noticed with DMG in particular is that it is actually sensitive to uh, capacitive inputs, which means you don't actually need the button membranes to test it out if you don't want to. It certainly helps but is not necessary. But anyway, yeah, looks like the kit's working, so. That's all we need to know for now. Pop that out of there. And I think we'll pop that out of there. And we'll just leave these connected for now. And set that aside. Now we're going to be working on the front shell here, and that goes, yeah. So I didn't have these for the original video that I made due to a shipping error, but these go on these four long screw posts just like that. They make it so that when you install this board, it sits at the proper height no matter no matter what you do. And it is super handy. Alright. Let's drop 
these in there. Now I believe I have new button membranes. Indeed I do. These are also from Retro Game Repair Shop. So these buttons themselves, the buttons that I'm using are um, funny playing manufactured reproductions. The membranes, I don't remember who makes them. I think they're just generic aftermarket button membranes, but they are uh, sold by retro modding. Try and prevent everything from spilling over. When we flip it over, that's what it's gonna look like. Like I said, I would have preferred um, dark gray, but work with what we got. Uh, let me actually double check. I might have some DMG buttons. Yeah. Yeah, how's that look? That looks better. All right, so before I put this together, I'm going to I'm going to end up using these black buttons just because I think they look better, but these are funny playing made buttons. And so far I've been extremely impressed with their plastics in the Game Boy Advance. So I just want to hold this together and try it out. And yeah, these, these feel great. Um, not quite stock. I think the stock buttons are a little bit spongier, uh, but that's not necessarily a good thing. This feels like they have more of a click to them, even though they're still uh, membrane buttons. Uh, and, and of course, that could be due to the uh, membranes that I use, since I'm not using OEM membranes. But I think the plastics themselves, I think they're just about equivalent to stock. These actual plastic buttons, I think were the buttons that came with this shell. And uh, they didn't work in that shell because Retro 6 doesn't understand that paint on the inside isn't quite good. Funny Playing understands the importance of tolerances. Retro 6 does not. But since this shell doesn't have paint, they seem to work just fine in here. So I think that's what I'm going to go with. Okay, cool. All right. And there is actually one more thing that Valder has made that makes this install nice and easy. So let me go grab it. All right. And all the way at the bottom of the pile there, I just rearrange things. Um, we have here this funny playing branded plastic bracket. The uh, idea for this thing is that you can set the LCD inside of it and it is a very tight, very comfy fit. That actually goes on the inside. Kind of like that. And then you can use this to uh, position it within the shell itself. And uh, that'll, that'll make the install easier. If you're using the bracket, you need to remove two of these spacers because the bracket takes place, 
takes the place of some of the spacers. And if you're using the bracket, you do not have to use the adhesive. It's one or the other. I mean, you, you can use both if you're that dedicated, but you don't need to use the adhesive if you're using the bracket. So I'm going to leave the adhesive out for now, and I'm going to use the bracket. Um, I think the install will go a little bit smoother that way. So this snap into that. Fold it like that. Yes. And then that fits into the bracket. Like that. It is a nice and tight fit, unlike the aftermarket IPS kits where the uh, bracket is kind of loosey goosey there. That will fit in there just like that. this in there we are missing the speaker still but I just want to flip it over and show you how good that looks all right so before we continue we will need to add a speaker The single downside to this, to these kits so far, I think, is that they do not come with a speaker pre-installed, and honestly, I think that is just a crying shame there. But, oop, drop, throwing my screwdriver everywhere. Your original Game Boy did come with a perfectly working speaker. Assuming no funny business, at the very least. Gotta remove an annoying amount of screws, but it's okay. Just enough to get that out of there. And we will insert that into our build. Put these screws back in a moment. All right, so this is going to go into here, just like that. This is the only soldering that you need to do, and quite frankly, if you do not care about audio, then you don't even have to go this far, but it's definitely recommended to do it while you have it open, because otherwise it will never get done. Come on. just those two joints just like that well not quite just like that but almost There we go. Just like that. Nice and snug. Alright. Let's zoom that back 
out. shell comes with brand new screws. I think I shall use them. It is worth noting that the shell comes with one, two, three, four, five, six longer screws. These are for the outside. The rest are for the uh, inside here. When it comes to funny playing shells, it's best to use the screws that they come with when it comes to other shells, uh, generic aftermarket shells, it's best to use your original screws. Um, in general, it's best to use your original screws. The only exceptions are the funny playing shells and the retro six shells. Though with retro six, you can go either way if you want. One more. <sighs> there you go. That's it. Um, one thing worth noting, I didn't peel the adhesive off this screen again because I knew that I would have my fingers all over it and I didn't want to uh, ruin it. Um, we're past that step. If you're doing a permanent install, you should have peeled the adhesive off by now. But also, make sure you get this ribbon plugged in, because if you don't plug that in, you're going to have a bad time. But from here on out, we are in the home stretch. Just got to get that plugged in to that. And then that goes on to there. One, two, three, four. And with DMGs, I almost treat them like a uh, lug pattern on a car. Come on. Screwdriver is not gripping. There it goes. All right. So I'll do like one, two, three, four, five, six, or something like that. Of course, I just did it the opposite of that, but same deal, really. And based on how my screwdriver is gripping these, it looks like Funny Playing did the same annoying thing where it is one screw down. Yep. 
That's it. That's why my driver is not gripping properly. So if you're using the iFixit kit, the stock sized bits are the Y1 and the funny playing bits are the Y0. So this is So this is the stock sized bit Y1 and then this is the funny playing bit. I'm not 100% sure why they did that. I'm assuming it's manufacturing error. It's not a big enough deal to uh, make a fuss about, but it's annoying enough to people like me who like to use the proper size screwdriver on everything. Come on, you can do it. Okay, that's nice and tight. And look at that, look at how nice and centered that LCD is within the within the shell. So I like to save these centers. The uh, adhesive is still on the front there, so it's not, or the paper is still on the front there, so it's not very sticky. Save that. Save that for something. And there we go. are working as expected mostly I don't remember how to toggle the uh, pallets oh there we go there you go Kit is performing admirably, as expected. Perfectly centered in the shell that it's designed for with the bracket that it's designed for. It's amazing how things work out when you're using a funny playing kit with a funny playing bracket and a funny playing shell. With a funny playing lens, everything lines up perfectly. No trimming, no modding of the shell. The single only soldering we had to do was to get that speaker in there. And buttons feel fantastic. The single only improvement we could have done is I could have peeled that um, film off the uh, LCD, but if I just pop this apart, it's no big deal to peel that off. Did the Viridian Forest. Look how they massacred my boy. This was one of the uh, 
unfortunate side effects of cramming two whole regions into one Game Boy cart. Massacre Verdian Forest. But otherwise it plays pretty good. That Viridian Forest nonsense has nothing to do with how the game plays, but... The whole reason I'm running around is I'm, I'm testing out the D-pad, and I have zero complaints with it. Uh, so this is, again, this is new Funny Playing Plastics. Very nice. I'm pretty happy with this. I will say it does... It does look kind of weird with no text here. I'm just so used to there being text here. But I will say, I absolutely prefer having the shell. And like I said earlier in the video, this damage over here was caused by customs. So what that means is they opened up the package that this shell was in and they inspected the goods and then they approved the goods. They didn't confiscate and destroy, they approved. So that means the Nintendo Game Boy logo here, or rather the lack of a Nintendo Game Boy logo here, means that this shell actually made it to me instead of being destroyed in customs. So I will absolutely, any day of the week, prefer that my shell does not have this logo than having no shell. Um, yeah. It, it, it's still weird without it, but like I said, any day of the week, I'd rather have a shell without it than have no shell. That's just the way it is. Um, this color, again, it's, I don't know, it's kind of weird. It's, it's, it's soft red, lightish, lightish red. I, I do actually really dig it, um, but it's, it's not your, not, not your typical, not your typical color, but I'm digging it. It feels pretty good so far. And unlike the funny or the retro six shell, it actually works with the buttons that it comes with. And they don't get stuck. You can kinda hear it how they aren't rebounding rebounding as they should. It, it gets a little bit stuck down. I had to use the original the OEM buttons in here instead because they had slightly looser tolerances. Um, whereas if I had these buttons in there, they didn't fit at all. You can hear how that sounds compared to this. You can hear how much louder it is because it gets stuck for like a half second after I lift my finger up and then it pops up, whereas this comes up with my finger. This is much better. Highly recommend it. Uh, the lens itself... Same as what was coming with the previous kit, perfectly fine. Nothing, nothing notable about that, I think. Um, the text, again, perfectly fine, nothing notable. It is, at the very least, on the shell straight. Um, oh, these shells come with a link port cover, if that is a big deal for you. Uh, personally, I don't mind too much one way or the other, but it is... All, things, all other things being equal, I would prefer to have it over not having it. I won't count it against Retro 6, but it is worth noting. Um, again, that, that text labeling, though, that's just so bad on the other one. I don't know. I don't know how that happened. It's just so noticeably crooked on that blue shell. One thing I did suggest to them, uh, if they're going to have this big blank area, they should s ship it with stickers that you can apply if you want. Uh, I suggested to Retro Game Repair Shop that he ship stickers in this same size, uh, just in the box with the kit, and you can apply it to the shell if you want, or just not apply it. I thought that was a cool compromise to just having this big empty area. Um, then again, with this big empty area, you could of course, you know, engrave your name or something or get custom stickers printed up. And then this little area up here would be where you'd transfer over this sticker. Uh, let's see if we can actually do that, why not? 
Normally heat helps with this process, but this sticker looks actually pretty degraded, so it'll probably come up no problem. Just got to get the razor under it. And there you go, just like that. Again, this sticker's not in the best of shape, but good enough. And then yeah, we could have some, some custom stickers here with either Valder's logo or the RGRS logo or something, or I don't know, something here. I just, I think this is a canvas and there ought to be something here. But I don't know. Looks good, feels good. If you're looking for an aftermarket shell, I think this is the way to go. Um, I still think OEM shells are the best if you can swing it, but understandably not all of them are in salvageable condition, uh, especially if you're using the original gray ones. This one in particular is pretty good, so I'm gonna save it for another build, but some of them are quite yellowed. Um, Retro modding does have some pretty cool shells as well. Unfortunately, they are a little bit lower quality injection molding and a little bit lower quality plastic. But otherwise, otherwise they're, they're, they're pretty darn good. Uh, the only thing is these are not pre-trimmed for the IPS kits. So you can see on this one in particular, I did have to cut that screw post right there because this is slightly transparent. Uh, and of course this one has a different IPS kit in it, but you know, it is what it is. These are stock styled. These are IPS styled, um, you know, go with, go with whichever suits your needs. Um, I'm, I'm super happy with it though. If there's anything in particular you guys want me to check out or want me to test out with this shell, please let me know in the comments. I know lately I've been kind of bad at responding to comments but trust me when I say I do still read them all um, I've been trying to let the uh, community take care of some of the comments because I just simply don't have the time to sit down and, and help out everyone who needs help I just I mean I, I, I've got stuff going on I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I'd love to help you all if I could but I just I don't have the time for that anymore um, but I I do still read them, so if you have good suggestions, good advice, or you know you you need imminent help, I'll try and take a look when I can. But please, please don't expect me to respond right away. Um, otherwise, I will go ahead and post plenty of information to the description, like I usually do. There will be links to where you can get this shell, the bracket I used, the LCD kit I used, um, probably something else that I'm forgetting right now, but I don't know. There, there's good stuff in there. I'd recommend checking it out. I always try and put good stuff in the description uh, for those that are trying to follow along at home or just looking for more information on this stuff. Uh, but anyway, that's all I got for right now. Thanks for watching. Keep on keeping on. Quick addendum, because I feel it's worth addressing. There are, to my knowledge, aside from the Retro 6 shell, which I hardly count, but um, to my knowledge, there are three different molds for DMG shells at the moment. There are the generic aftermarket shells, which seem to be these uh, quote-unquote factory A shells that Retro Game Repair Shop has and that Retro Modding is leveraging for their own custom shells. Um, these are about on par with quality as each other. They're both pretty good. Um, the difference is that, of course, the Factory A quote-unquote shells have the stock-like text on the back, um, which does make them a little bit harder to come by in the States because Customs does look out for these sort of things. 
they do have the Nintendo Game Boy logo on them. Um, if you can get them, these are very nice shells, very high quality, so on and so forth. Uh, but they're, they otherwise feel just about the same to me as the uh, retro modding shells do. But the retro modding shells come in some uh, different colors there. Uh, and of course, without the Nintendo Game Boy text and generic text on the back. Um, these are both stock-like shells in that you will have to trim them if you want to install... Ah, excuse me, got the hiccups. If you want to install an IPS kit... Uh, you notice on both of these you can see the screw posts that I trimmed through the front because they're both somewhat translucent. Um, but they are both good shell options and I don't think you can go wrong with either. Whereas the funny playing shell I think feels even better than both of them. But it is an IPS ready shell which means if you are trying to build a stock or stock like Game Boy... Uh, such as this fantastic machine that I got from uh, Mr. Chrono or uh, Dr. Game Boy PhD, depending on how you know him. Um, you know, with the original screen, but with a LED backlight kit it, behind the screen, um, this is the better option. If you're doing an IPS kit, this is the better option, I think. Um, just all depends on what you're looking for, what you're trying to build. Uh, again, one thing with the retro modding shells in particular is when you're ordering from retro modding, you're ordering something custom, more um, more boutique, as it were. Whereas if you're ordering one of the factory A shells from Retro Game Repair Shop, you're ordering something more stock-like. So I know this isn't a color that stock comes in. This is my preferred color when it comes to generic aftermarket stuff. Uh, but retro modding, you get this. You can get this. This is one of the options. Another is this, um, you can see my power switch is this uh, gray with glitter inside. Um, another thing they recently came out with, which I will be doing a video on very shortly. In fact, it will probably go up even before even this video. They have these new marble shells and they look, they look really good. But again, they're all good options. It just completely depends on what you want to get. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.